Hello everyone and welcome to another game you requested, it's from the 1962 Curaçao Candidates Tournament. We've already shown uh, Paul Benko versus uh, Bobby Fischer, a uh, very nice victory by Paul Benko with uh, the, the Benko opening or, or the Hungarian opening, uh, the G3 move. And uh, a lot of you said that you would like to also see his game against Mikhail Tal and uh, well... Uh, let's just enjoy it. We've ha we haven't covered the 1962 Curaçao candidates. Uh, I'm planning to cover it uh, at some point, maybe as a part of the Tigran Petrosian saga, as this is a candidates tournament that leads to him uh, uh, to the World Chess Championship match, but maybe as a standalone tournament, as it's such a uh, nice tournament. Uh, but until I decide on that, let's just enjoy this game. So Benko with the white pieces again, we have g3 at the Benko opening. We have g6 by Tal, bishop to g2, bishop to g7, and d4. Uh, we have d6 by Tal, and now e4 grabbing the center. Uh, we have knight to f6, uh, and knight to e2 now. Uh, we have castles by Tal, castles by Benko, and the knight b to d7. We have knight bc3 c6 and now a4 so this the position is similar uh to the position fisher had um against uh, benko uh, also in the in the uh, curacao candidates uh although fisher's knight was still on b8 and fisher had a pawn on e5 but um, uh, what fisher allowed was uh, for benko to push this pawn all the way to a5 whereas tal doesn't allow it tal pushes a5 himself uh and he says that it's uh, too, too, too strong to allow white to push a5 uh, so okay, Benko plays b3, similar in the uh, like in the game against Fischer, he wants to develop this bishop to a3 to assume this strong diagonal, and rook to e8 by Tal, with bishop to a3 and now queen to c7. And it's interesting, uh, this position uh, has never happened again after it was played in this game. Uh, so queen to d2 by Benko, preparing to connect rooks, and only now e5 by Tal, now that he really controls the e-file. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, Benko ignores it, we have rook a to d1, and now e captures on d4. We have knight captures on d4, and now knight to c5. Tal finds uh, a, an excellent outpost for this knight on c5, uh, as white will be unable to push b4 due to the a5 pawn Tal pushed, and also white doesn't have a d pawn to kick it away, and it's very unlikely that you will give up your dark square bishop for this knight. Uh, so an excellent outpost for the knight with f3 strengthening the e4 pawn and now b6. Tal is now ready to uh, develop the light square bishop as well. With knight d back to e2, uh, now the queen and rook uh, are ready to capture on d6, so uh, Benko has to, uh, Tal has to defend it some way. Now you could defend it with rook uh, to d8, but Tal is greedy. Tal uh, says, uh, I already developed this rook to e8, I, I want to play bishop b7, maybe bishop to a6, and bring this rook over to uh, d8 without wasting any time. So first he defends it with the bishop to f8, but now with bishop to f8 this bishop no longer controls this excellent diagonal so Benko transfers his own bishop to this excellent diagonal we have a bishop back to b2 uh, queen to e7 by Tal this is a this is an odd move I uh, haven't really uh, seen the idea behind queen to e7 uh, bishop to b7 followed by rook a to d8 as he planned uh, seems to be to, uh, the way to go but uh, uh, he prefers queen to e7 uh, and Benko take, takes this opportunity to get his knight into the game with knight to d4. Knight to f4 was also a possibility, but he plays knight to d4 as the queen no longer guards the c6 pawn. But uh, this doesn't uh, really bother Tal as he was planning to develop the bishop to b7 either way. So bishop to b7, and now uh, the, the knight also blocks the queen's attack towards the d6 pawn. So Tal doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, we have rook f to e1, and now bishop to g7. Now the bishop can get back to this strong diagonal, as the pawn uh, is uh, not in any danger of being captured. We have f4 by uh, Benko, and now finally rook a to d8. Tal manages to uh, get his a rook to d8 as planned. Bishop to f3, now controlling uh, the g4 square, not allowing uh, the, the black knight to go there, and also making room for the king or the queen to occupy the g2 square. We have queen to d7 by Tal, uh, and now if you don't want to allow some queen to h3 ideas, uh, Benko prevents it with queen to g2. And d5, Tal would be very happy if he can just trade everything on d5, uh, make his light square bishop come alive, but Benko of course is not interested in that, he says we're just gonna keep the center closed. We have e5, 
pushing the knight back, knight f to e4, and now uh, it seems like uh, Tal is offering a pawn, but he's really not. Benko, Benko trades once with knight captures and d captures, and now even though it seems like he can capture here, he really can't, because if you capture, you just get knight captures, it uh, doesn't really matter what you capture the knight with, let's say queen captures, c5 just wins the game, as now you either lose the queen, of course you're going to move the queen, but then you lose the knight, so you're going to be down a piece. So, after d captures on e4, Benko doesn't fall for it, uh, he plays Bishop back to e2, and now Queen back to e7, getting the Queen away from this d-file, as it's really just uh, uh, not really doing all that much here. And now Benko brings the Bishop back, Bishop to a3. So really nice maneuvering with the Bishop by Benko, first a3, then returning to b2, when the b2 diagonal became more important, then now returning it to a3, pinning the knight as Tal's queen is now on e7. Uh, and here Tal probably should have gone queen to c7. Uh, even on the previous move, queen to c7 was better just uh, to, to not uh, just so bishop to a3 doesn't do anything. But even here, just retreating with uh, queen to c7 is best. But here, uh, Tal played f6. Now, is this one of those positions where it's actually okay to play f6? Uh, well, you will decide as you will pause the video here and try to find the best continuation for Benko uh, in this position. Well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. Uh, so, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations. Uh, you are uh, an excellent punishers, uh, punisher of uh, an f6 move that uh, when it's not okay to play it uh, in a position. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, bishop to c4 check. And now, of course, uh, you see that you cannot uh, interpose with the knight as the knight is pinned. You will lose the queen. Uh, you cannot go king to f8 because just knight e6 check pretty much ends the game. Uh, so Tal played king to h8 and now knight e6 just the same. As uh, the knight still cannot be captured due to the pin, you have to move the rook. The problem is, uh, and uh, well... Uh, once this dark square bishop gets eliminated, and it will be eliminated, uh, this bishop will once again return to this square. Uh, and then Benko will have these, uh, well, uh, we can say it, a, a nice bishop pair from hell. Uh, so, rook to d5. Tal decided it was uh, better just to give up the rook that way. For example, if you play something like rook captures, rook captures then there's uh, there, there's not a good move. Uh, once the knight captures here, you're, you're just going to bring the bishop to b2, you're going to capture on f6, open up this diagonal, and it's just game over. So Tal decided to give up the, the exchange with rook to d5, uh, to at least get rid of one of the bishops. Uh, so Benko said, okay, it's a... Uh, it's a, it's a nice rook, I will have it. Uh, bishop captures on d5, c captures, and now, of course, you are getting rid of the dark square bishop. Knight captures on g7, king captures on g7, and now pawn captures with check. With queen captures uh, on f6, now uh, not allowing bishop to b2, as the, the queen now guards the b2 square, but it's not a problem. Queen to f2. You don't want to allow something like e3 and d4 to, uh, for Tal to free this bishop. So queen to f2, not allowing e3, and now knight back to e6. Now Tal, uh, he's down the exchange, but he does have a strong center, and if he can push d, sorry, <laughs> d4 and d3, and if this bishop comes alive, uh, it could become uh, very dangerous for Benko. So here Tal is saying basically, well, bluffing actually, uh, that uh, Benko cannot capture on b6, that it's too dangerous, but Benko says... Uh, I'm not tricking you. I know. I know your your style. Uh, I'm just gonna capture it because this is a nice free pawn. So he played queen captures on b6, and now of course Tal has to do something about the bishop. He ha he plays bishop to a8, and now we have bishop to d6 by Benko. Benko is now preparing bishop to e5 to win the queen here. So Tal uh, just gets the queen out of the way. We have queen to f5. Uh, now already, again, if Tal can get these two moves in, then the bishop, the queen, uh, there there might be, sorry, there, there might be something here. Uh, but queen captures an a5. Benko just grabs another pawn. He says there, there's nothing there. Uh, Tal uh, moves the king even further to safety with king to h6 and now finally c4. Uh, uh, starting to push the pawns, because if you capture, then queen, ca just a nice queen trade, uh, but uh, uh, as Benko is up uh, in material, Tal cannot afford a queen trade. So rook back to d8, attacking the bishop, and now bishop to e7, attacking the rook, and also preparing bishop to g5 if needed. This will come with check. So uh, Tal says, okay, here it's uh, all or nothing, e3. Uh, Tal just pushes a pawn and he asks, uh, are you maybe interested in a nice rook on d8? 
and uh, well could you capture it sure you could capture it there there isn't all that uh, much poison there but uh, there there's no need uh, uh, to give Tal more than you need because a, a lot of players did this and you know it always goes wrong so just rook captures an e3 uh, just getting rid of that pawn and uh, getting the rook to a uh, well a more useful square uh, we have rook back to e8 now the rook overstayed its welcome on d8 and now bishop to g5 check of course any trades are not in your favor now the rook on e8 is unguarded so here we have king back to g7 by Tal and now rook d to e1, Benko claims the e-file for himself. Uh, and again, Tal says it's all or nothing, knight captures on g5. Tal tries giving up the rook on e8 uh, for some knight f3 action. And even though you could capture and allow knight f3 check, uh, it's uh, really hard to, uh, uh, to actually blunder the game. Even if something like king g2, knight captures on e1 with check, Rook captures and uh, this uh, you deliver this check in hopes of picking up the queen on a5. It doesn't work because just queen captures on a8. So it it's um, uh, very hard to, to blunder this game. But you're playing against Tal. You don't want to, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> complicate it too much. So he just played f captures on g5 and Tal now plays rook to f8. So Tal now has decent pressure along the f file and if he manages to free the light square bishop still uh tal maybe could could do something but benko here played queen to a7 check uh, and in fact it was in this position that michael tal resigned the game on move 41 as there really is nothing more to do here uh, because once the king moves you can't go here now the pawn is guarding that square you have to go to g8 or h8 doesn't really matter for example king to h8 if you block with the rook of course you lose the bishop with check so if king to h8 you're just getting getting rook to e7 and there is no defense just rook captures on h7 is coming and uh, with the queen on a7 you also guard the f2 square so there is uh, you can't even do uh, a nice little check on f2 uh, so yeah I think I'm gonna use this as a thumbnail as it's really nice but uh, yeah a very nice victory by Paul Benko defeating uh, Fisher defeating Tal uh, he also beat Paul Karras in this tournament so it, it was a, a very nice tournament for Benko and uh, like I said at one point we will cover the 1962 Curaçao candidates tournament uh, even uh, either as a part of the Tigran Petrosian saga or as a standalone tournament we're gonna we're gonna see how it goes uh, but yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. And I would like to apologize for not mentioning it was a mate in three in the previous video. That's the price you pay for not showing all that many puzzles. I just completely, it, it just completely slipped my mind. Uh, but, you know, uh, it, looking on the bright side of things, uh, you know, it's very unlikely that uh, I will make such a mistake again. So that's that's a plus, I guess. Uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Emily Boyce, uh, Gabriel Frechette, uh, Ryan Stevenson, Daniel Moyer, and Vince Shinaberry for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the Capablanca saga, we are now uh, going after that, and we're going to finish it, and then just checking up on your suggestions, and of course, whatever happens in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.